This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Peter Donnelly tells us how genetics helps us to understand common diseases and develop new therapies. Good afternoon, Peter. Hi. What are you trying to achieve in your research? My research tries to understand the genetic basis of common human diseases. So we know that for many or most diseases, diseases like arthritis and schizophrenia and diabetes, part of the story that makes some people more likely to develop those diseases and some less likely is to do with the DNA they inherit from their parents. That's part of the story and we know that part of the story is also lifestyle, environment and diet and so on. And so my research is focused on trying to learn for a particular disease which letters in our DNA, which parts of our DNA code are responsible for some people being more likely to get schizophrenia, which other parts are responsible for someone being more likely to get heart disease and, and another person arthritis. And what is the impact of knowing about the genetic basis of these diseases? There are two different sorts of impact. Uh, in some cases, if we find genetic variants which have big effects, and that's true for rarer diseases, then we can use them to identify people who are at high risk of those diseases. At the moment, for common diseases, we're not very well placed to do that prediction. But on the other hand, knowing about the genetic variants can give us really important clues into the biology of the diseases. So for, for most of the common diseases, we don't quite know what's causing them or triggering them. And if we can find changes in our DNA which are associated with the disease, if, if someone having a T in their code at this position is more likely to get heart disease than someone who has an A in that position in their genetic code, then we can try and work out what the T does and in contrast what the A does. And that will potentially give us a clue about some biological aspect of the disease, what's happening within people to trigger the disease. And in turn, we can try and use that information to understand the disease better and to develop new treatments or new therapies. So how do you carry out your studies and what are the challenges? Our studies involve uh, collecting DNA from uh, patients with the disease who are happy to participate in the studies and have consented to do that and comparing that with the DNA from healthy people. So we would typically measure their DNA at a large number of positions, maybe half a million or a million or possibly even read the entire DNA sequence, all three billion positions in the DNA sequence. We do that in, in a number of sick people, typically several thousand of them, uh, and compare that with a number of healthy people. And then we're looking at the patterns, or we're looking for patterns which are more similar amongst the sick people than healthy position, or, or letters in the DNA code in particular positions which are more common in the sick people than the healthy people. Part of my work uh, is statistical, so it's developing methods to try and tease information out of these very large data sets. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in this field over the past five or ten years? It's been, a really, it's been a really exciting time. There's been an explosion in our understanding and knowledge of the genetic basis of common diseases. If we'd had this discussion six or seven years ago, across all of the common diseases that we suffer from, we knew maybe a handful of examples of genetic variants which were common and affected uh, people's risk of disease. So whereas five or six years ago we knew five to ten examples, there are now over 2,000 examples of documented genetic variants which affect people's risk of diseases. It's been an extraordinarily exciting time in our ability to learn and understand about the genetics of, of common diseases, and that shows no signs of, of slackening, that there's more and more discovery ongoing. So why does your research matter? Why should we put money into it? I think uh, through studying the genetics of diseases, it gives us a particular way into understanding the disease. For most of the common diseases, uh, in spite of, in many cases, decades of research, in some cases hundreds of years of research, we know depressingly little about the key aspects of the disease. What's triggering it within people? Uh, what are the differences that cause some people to develop the disease and others not to? Or in some cases, people who develop the disease to progress well or, or, or not so well. And genetics gives us a whole new way of understanding that biology. It gives us new footholds into the biology of the diseases. And so through understanding the genetics and learning what those genetic differences are doing, we have the chance to understand differences about uh, the disease process and then to use that information in a way to develop new drugs, to find new drug targets and develop new ways of treating people. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? I think uh, genetics is a key part uh, and has a key role to play in translation. Uh, much of the research is at the, the end of the, base, the basic science in terms of fundamental underlying discoveries, 
but then it's really important for all of us, and, and certainly for my own work, to try and work out how we can move that into the clinic, how we can make differences uh, in medical treatment for people, and I think genetics will have a huge effect uh, in clinical medicine over the next probably 10 or 20 years, and we're starting to see some changes. Now we're starting to see areas where knowledge of genetics, of the DNA variants that people carry, or uh, even of their entire DNA sequences, in some cases knowledge of the genetics of the bacteria and the, and the viruses that make it sick, they, are, they can already be used by doctors to work out how to adapt treatments or, or give different treatments. So I think genetics is starting to play an important role in translation and over the next 10 or 20 years, it'll have a major impact on clinical medicine. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a pleasure.